Hi guys, welcome to another video from Mind the Grad. As you know, I'm Valeria. I'm a career coach for international students in the UK. And today I have a special guest for you, Sabina. Sabina will introduce herself very shortly, but she is an amazing girl that I've met online. She is an ex-EU student, she's a business owner, and just an awesome blogger. So um, welcome, Sabina. Thank you for spending time with me today. So just introduce yourself to anyone that doesn't know you well uh, okay hi everyone hi guys uh, and thank you Valeria for inviting me this is really a pleasure to be here and um, uh, so yeah to cut the story short I will introduce myself my name is Sabina I'm a business owner I'm an entrepreneur in education industry uh, I have my business Gagarin group and new school of business Gagarin group I'm a founder of this group uh, which been on the market for um, I think six years and more than six years wow. yeah and uh, new school of business I'm a director and founder as well uh, basically it's both companies are in education higher education industry so we help students to apply to universities uh, and the the good thing about our services that they are free for uh, EU and home students like UK resident mostly because we help students to apply for uh, student loan and grants from the government which i think we will discuss a bit later on and i've been a student myself so i really know well how the program works how universities are work and uh, it, it, it's not like it is a big deal to get a university in the uk but it's not that scary as some people may think that's great. So thank you so much for this introduction. It's a very impressive, your background. And I, as I mentioned before, today we'll talk about what, what it is like to study in the UK after Brexit, what the changes are going to be like. Obviously, the Brexit, Brexit already happened, but um, on a surface, nothing has really changed. It will change next year. And a lot of students were asking me, international, EU, uh, what does it mean for us? What does it mean for, for anyone that wishes to come to study to the UK? So uh, let's just go back in time and discuss what it was like before uh, UK decided to leave the EU. So I assume you were a EU student yourself. And how did you manage to study in the UK? Like financially, logistically wise, how did that happen? So basically I moved into UK um, first and then I started to study. Um, I opened my own business first and then, you know, I went to study. It, it almost happened at the same time. Um, it's like, um, because I was always interested in the education, universities, like in the UK, that was like my dream to, to, to study here. I was surrounded by people, you know, that, that uh, university representatives and I really like researched this uh, topic. And uh, I applied myself with uh, one of our partners, actually. So I was the very first intake that I've done. Like, I was one of the students, <laughs> apart from my sending the clients to university. I've been a student myself. So I, like, been my, my own first client, let's say. Right. That's an amazing story. And I think it's very important to understand from students' perspective what it is like to be a student in the UK, how it works from all the financial matters and uh, logistic-wise. And um, in terms of financial support, how an EU citizen before Brexit could study in the UK? How did it happen for you? Uh, yes, so basically, uh, as UK is a kind of... Uh, very expensive destination for higher education uh, but the good thing was for a european citizen that the prices were exactly the same as for british as for uk students so that was amazing that was for various years we'll benefit from that and um, unfortunately um, this is gonna go away very soon so uh, if you're asking me what were the prices and what are the prices now for a Euro European students, that is 9,250. And the good thing is, because it's still expensive, right? Right. Um, uh, you can ask from government, Student Finance England, you can ask for um, a student loan. And you can cover tuition fee and also maintenance loan, which covers your living expenses. Basically, you can. It, it's a dream to be a student, European student or UK student. Yeah. Because we have around 
Uh, if you're, let's say, if you're a single student with no dependents, uh, that will mean around £12,000 a year just into your bank account. Like, that's, you know, apart from the tuition fee covered. Wow. So, isn't it that the dream? I mean, uh, of course, those money you have to return, but also the program is really loyal. I mean, if you, um, when you're studying through your three years or four years degree, uh, you don't have uh, you, don't, you don't have to give it back uh, only when you you know finish your degree and then um, uh, government gonna look into your uh, national insurance number and see what is your salary then and there is a threshold um, which was different every year growing 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 I remember when I started this business it was threshold of 21,000 a year so let's say if you earn that money or less per year, it's your salary, it's your income, you don't have to give it back. And then year by year, it's higher, higher. And the moment is the threshold is 27,000 pounds wow. per year. So if you don't make 27,000 pounds, 27, pounds a year, you're not starting to repay your loan. You kind of uh, still living, trying to <laughs> make a life of it. But once you are uh, above this level, which is quite high, it's way yes. above the national minimum. Um, you will start to return uh, your your um, loan. So if you are unemployed, you don't re you're not you don't have this pressure to to repay back. So the maintenance loan was also available for you students or only for local students. Uh, it, it is available. Yes. So basically, what you have to do, I uh, have to move. To UK first even if that's just one month before your studies and you have to start work so then you're gonna be under the status EU migrant worker right and these days that you're missing from the job let's say you uh, you don't go to work two three days per week because you have to be in the university so these days uh, government gonna fund you uh, so you kind of maintain the same lifestyle as, as you had before Okay, that's great. So that was before Brexit happened or before the changes after Brexit are going to take place. So I guess at the moment, it's the final year where EU students are benefiting from the scheme. They're able to apply for financial support from UK government, uh, able to figure out how to get the maintenance support. So what is going to happen next year when um, UK is going to implement the immigration changes post-Brexit? So... Unfortunately, as sad as it sounds, it's gonna end. Uh, so this academic year, uh, you know, uh, like England, they already announced that it's not gonna be any uh, student finance loans from next academic year. And what I mean by academic year, let's say now is 2021. And in the UK, there are various intakes per year. It's not just you can start in September, you can start in January and some uh, maybe a smaller university, they even have spring intake. So yeah. uh, I, I've been studying in uh, May intake. So I've, yeah. I started my year every year in May. The legislation goes for the academic year. So what that means, even now we close uh, September intake, we still have January intake, we still have May intake, and that will be with the old legislation for EU uh, citizens. Even and the May 2021? Yes, yes, absolutely. Because the academic year changes in August. So until August 2021, mm -hmm. um, I don't think there are any courses in August, but there are some in June, July. That's the very latest. But what I would say, I would I really recommend, uh, like this summer being crazy. Even though, uh, you know, students are, um, with all the pandemic situation are at home, like everyone applies, applies, especially those that don't want to miss the chance, you know, and get these, um, firstly, um, the, the student loans, because that's going to be covered by the government uh, with very loyal program. And plus, don't forget, then the next year, ne next academic year, all EU students will be on the same level with international students. Yeah. So what that will mean, that will mean even the tuition fee will go higher. So no funding. Prices are higher, and of course, now there's a big demand for that. That makes sense. So basically, just to summarize, 
from August 2021, there is no more opportunity for you students to study in UK on old prices, to get uh, finance loan uh, for tuition, get maintenance loan for living expenses. They'll be considered just like international students now, basically higher prices and do whatever you want uh, in terms of covering your expenses and tuition. But um, what Sabina told us is that uh, if you're a new student that wants to study in the UK, you still have a chance. Actually, it's still not too late to apply for January intake or even May intake or spring intake. So uh, it's your last chance to benefit from uh, previous arrangement between the UK and the EU. But I actually just had a question that came up in my head. Is it only for bachelor's degrees? Or what happens if you're a master's student? Uh, there are no such details, you know, even if you go now to Gov UK, there are no um, any information about that. They just say like straightforward student loans not going to be uh, available for your students. But the uh, because like United Kingdom, it's not just England, right? And what I what I heard that, uh, you know, um, England already officially announced that, you know, no student loans and Scotland, Wales and Ireland, they still, there is no official statement, if that makes sense. Yeah. But my, they might do the same, but not because now it's a, a little bit, no one knows. Yeah, Scotland is a bit different, right, in terms of the prices yeah. uh, and le length of degree. So they might have their own policy, or we can hope for that. But at the moment, uh, if you are a master's student coming from EU, do you mm -hmm. have a chance to get a financial uh, aid? or for masters it doesn't apply? Yeah, it does apply. Uh, it does apply. Um, like years ago, it wasn't. Like, it was only undergraduate courses. And around, I'm, I don't want to lie now, maybe four years or something, like a four, three or five, something like that. Mm -hmm. They added also postgraduate loan. Mm -hmm. uh, there are no maintenance loan in postgraduate loans. Yeah. Uh, there is a little bit different structure. So the a government is paying into your bank account, uh, like the the maximum of uh, eleven thousand pounds, and from this money you have to pay the university fees. Right, that makes sense. So um, still, if you are a EU student wanted to do masters, you still have a chance to come in January and May. I think that's master students are usually more flexible in terms of when to start the course so if you needed this loan to come to study in the uk uh, there is still a chance and sabina owns a company that helps to get financial um, support from the government and it's the service is free for students i assume so can an eu student reach out to your company and ask help for um, coming to study the uk this year Yes, absolutely, absolutely. We have uh, students from all over the world. I mean, Italy, uh, Spain, Portugal, I don't know, France, Belgium, like actually like a, a big variety of students. And this is like my, my pleasure. It's, it's so interesting, you know, like to help students from you know, all over Europe. So uh, I will leave a link in the description below. It's Kagarin group. You can reach out the contact details on the website and it doesn't cost you anything to initiate the conversation uh, in case you're considering to come to study to the UK uh, while there is still funding opportunities. So um, I guess we have to move on to another topic and discuss what it means for international students because a lot of people were asking me what are the changes uh, for international students and <laughs> I think uh, the summary to this point is that there are no changes in terms of the funding because as before you couldn't receive uh, much support from the government, again, you wouldn't be able to receive your international student. Uh, the good news is that there, there is a post-study work visa that is going to be introduced um, for anyone graduating post-summer 2021. So it's actually great for international students because they don't have to go back straight away if they don't find a job for two years they can stand in UK legally work uh, do whatever search for a position so that's a, that's a benefit um, so I know that you also help international students with coming to study in the UK and you mentioned before it's very expensive to do any type of course in the UK so 
if we were to summarize it, like, is it even worth it to come to study to the UK as an international student from your experience? Uh, well, it depends. Yeah, obviously, uh, you have to prepare financially. So basically, if, you, if you're going uh, to the UK uh, and you apply for a state university, then normally you will get your 20 hours a week you can work. So then, you know, and also um, like financially is good if you if you have this 20 hours a week, plus uh, you can get um, you can get uh, a practice or internship, which is also good. Then you will have more chances, you know, to stay. And as you just mentioned, you know, like these two years, I think this is a really great opportunity, you know, for students, um, you know, to, to find job. And then, uh, yes, uh, uh, sorry, as, uh, uh, like answering your question. Yeah, I think it's worth it. Even, even if, um, like, depends what your strategy is, but even if you plan to get the, like, best education and then come back to your country, then I'm sure, at least in, in my culture, in my country, uh, Estonia, and also in Russia, where my background from, um, uh, it, it's like a kind of uh, prestige, uh, I was called, yeah. So, it, you know, to have a um, UK degree, and I'm sure that, even impacts on your salary in yeah. some cases. Well, you're, uh, you can, right? And also your language skills uh, will be much stronger if you studied in the UK. Um, right, and you're right. It's a, you have to consider a lot of factors. Uh, it can really be worth it if you have their, their career direction, you know why you come into the UK, what it means for you. Um, you perhaps work part-time or you look for internships and work experience, but you don't treat it as a golden ticket uh, for an amazing job. It's still going to require a lot of effort on your part to secure a great salary, to secure a great position. It's not, it doesn't mean paying for a course in the UK guarantees a job. And that's just a message I always give to anyone that is willing to come to the UK. Be prepared that it's also doesn't end there. <laughs> Um, your struggle or your battle for a success yeah but that's uh, actually very uh, generic topic as well like if you want to succeed you know there is no like uh, a magic pill that you know as, as we just mentioned like UK degree yeah magic pill then you're gonna be successful no of course of course it's an effort and you have to have like a strategy which I'm sure like uh, a study and work strategy Valeria can help with you know like to guide you know you know where you want to get and then when you have this picture clear, you know, you, you have mu much more chances. Yeah, you're right. So um, thank you for that. And um, just like to break some stereotypes because we don't know who is watching us today. Is it actually very hard to get to the UK in terms of studying? Is it, because some people think it's impossible to get into British University. Uh, and we're not talking about Oxford or Cambridge, we're talking about, you know, top 20 universities in the UK. Is it actually, hard and what are my chances as an average person uh it's not that hard it uh, as you mentioned it depends which university you want to apply if you want to apply like in top uh, 10 universities yeah then they're gonna definitely look on your overall grade and you know it must be like really really high if uh, we're talking about like uh, average universities which are still good uh in the in the uk then uh, you know uh, there are various options. Even for those that overall grade is really, really low, still we got the chances. You know, you can get a foundation degree, uh, you know, or maybe a little bit less ranked university, but still, you know, uh, the facilities are still the same. Some universities, you know, over years, like 100 years, they got uh, reputation. So, you know, and people also mostly go there to get uh, good connections and networking, you know, like along the School of Economics, you know, I think especially like for MBA, like business uh, owners or entrepreneurs, they go there not just because of the education, but because of the network. You're right. Uh, it is, I get a lot of questions. Does university rankings matter? Uh, does it matter which university I go for? And again, it's not a simple answer. Um, it depends what are your, needs are it depends your personal situation if it's too expensive too complicated you should you know it doesn't mean you, you have to go to the top 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 but at the same time 
uh, if you're uh, looking for connections, if you're looking to increase your chances of uh, employers targeting you, if you want to get the best, best, best uh, uh, cover, then obviously you, you should aim for top universities. But uh, it's not um, as straightforward, obviously, there are different courses available from different universities. Some courses offered by less prestigious universities could be more tailored to what you want to do. Uh, it could also be a financial question, which means um, if you, for masters, you have to choose a university that is less prestigious or um, with worse reputation, as we say. Um, it doesn't mean you'll have a bad time. It could actually mean that you get an opportunity to study in the UK and you might make the most of it and it wouldn't have mattered if you paid 10,000 more for more expensive course. Another business of yours or another thing that you help all the students is to get into university in the UK, right? So how does it work? If someone wanted to reach out to you, uh, to your business, to your company and get help, what do you offer and how does it work? Uh, yes, so uh, our our clients, our students, uh, we give them portfolio university that we work with. And uh, this is where the free service starts. I you know from A to Z, we, we guide students through the process. So, you know, like uh, to get a conditional offer, then unconditional, you know, the pass the test, the book the test, uh, I don't know, uh, help with interview tips um, or samples and uh, like adjust the other personal statements, you know, like little amendments or something like that. Uh, advice and guidance and uh, then when universe uh, this when university accepts students unconditionally we then apply for student loan so yes we we kind of cover everything mm -hmm. what, uh, um, that includes university application and the student finance application both right so if i'm an international student obviously i won't be able uh eligible for student finance, which services can I take from, from your company? Uh, yes, for international students, it's a little bit different. We do have uh, like different packages. And uh, I think the, uh, the very basic, um, very basic package will start from 250 pounds. No, I understand because circumstances change, but you will spend hours of your work, of your service, providing the answers, providing support. So you should be remunerated in some way. Um, so I will leave a link in the description below. If anyone wants to check out what kind of services available, if you are struggling to figure out how to apply to the UK universities, if you need help with uh, all the things that Sabina mentioned, then do check it out. You can also leave us questions in the comments. We'll try to respond. Um, and um, I just wanted to finish with a final question because overall Brexit is such a hot topic. It's still a big uh, piece of news, even though it's been years since UK announced that they're leaving. So uh, overall, because you work in the education sector from all perspectives, what's been the impact of Brexit to the education sector in the UK? Um. Well, the impact, we don't know it, the impact just yet because it, it's still, it's, we're not there. We know that it's, we, we can project, you know, but it's not yeah. gonna be like a, a straightforward answer. Uh, what I personally, if you want my uh, opinion, I'm a little bit scared, you know, like that university gonna be empty. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I mean, I mean, not empty, empty, because of course, you know, there are people with um, with a, a bigger budget that are actually can afford the university uh, degree in the UK, and there are even much higher degrees, you know, in states. So, um, but also, you know, there is a huge percentage of European students that were really counting on. Um, on these loans and, uh, and and now this is going to be taken away so what I think uh, that the, the audience may change within the university and, and maybe even less students will be studying 
but I'm not sure. This is my opinion. I'm no, sure. We're we are not economic advisors or political uh, experts. We're just a uh, few people working in the education sector. And um, I agree with you. I think definitely there'll be a change, either in change of numbers of students or change of demographics. And I think the fact that they're introducing this post study work visa means that they're trying to attract more international students to compensate for the amount of. Um, EU students that are not going to be coming anymore. But we have to see, obviously, what the long term impact. And obviously, now it's going to be hard to measure because of COVID 19. It also impacts the education sector a lot, uh, mostly because, as you know, uh, a lot of universities went remote and uh, a lot of uh, students were hesitant to come to the UK because of uh, money issues, because of the uncertainty, because of travel restrictions. So that will also have an impact. Um, and I hope to make another video soon on uh, COVID-19 and what it means for the students or for students overall. But uh, in the meantime, I'd like to thank Sabina. I will leave all the descriptions of her companies in, a, in a, the, of this video. I will also leave Instagram of Sabina because uh, she uh, has a huge audience. I know she blogs in Russian, but uh, don't hesitate to follow her, to ask her any questions. She's very approachable. She approached me and we became friends online and we're waiting for COVID-19 to end so we can meet finally in person. But guys, if you have any questions, let us know in the comments. We're happy to help. We hope that um, our short introduction to um, changes uh, in the UK education after Brexit it was uh, helpful uh, and Sabina thank you for uh, taking your time from your busy schedule of entrepreneur to speak to us today uh, thank you for inviting me uh, that was that was great I think we, we covered like really widely this whole topic and I honestly I I, um, I hope this will be helpful for some students that are thinking to apply and uh, you, uh, again, as Valeria just mentioned, uh, you can always uh, you can always write to us, maybe in direct message in um, Instagram or just by reaching on the website. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.